Hi there, it's Harry Kalimnios from thethoughtgym.com and welcome to today's yoga video which is 30 min yin. So a mini yin class, 30 minutes approximately in length. That's what we're going to be doing. So instead of holding the poses for three to five minutes, we're going to hold the poses for around one to two minutes in general. Hopefully this video works. It's actually the third time I'm shooting it. Technical issues on the previous two times. So fingers crossed we get this. Um, I'm not sure if I've got it in me to do a fourth recording here. So anyway, let's get going. Uh, we're going to start in puppy dog position. So bringing the knees over the hips, or rather the knees under the hips, I should say. And we creep ourselves forward, keeping the hips over the knees until we start to lower the chest closer and closer towards the ground, allowing the, maybe the forehead to rest on the ground and stretching the arms out in front. Here we start to release and relax into our breath, breathing in through the nose and into the belly, and release and relax. Hands can be flat on the ground, or they can be on your fingertips, or you can be on the heels of the hand, whatever feels to you correct. Please make sure that in any of the poses you don't ever enter a state of pain or pinching or anything like that. You want to feel a deep stretch, a little bit of maybe occasional discomfort, but never pain. If you're feeling pain, please start to back out of it, start to uh, be kind to your body, knowing that you may feel different today than you did the previous day. We hold this pose for up to two minutes in this class, so I'm not going to be using a timer, so I'm just going to be guessing on based on both my breath and my experience, roughly how long two minutes is. That first minute is just to release and relax, allow the body to know what's going on. The second one is where the magic happens. And this is a nice little class that you can do any time of the day if you're not in the mood for a fast flowing vinyasa. Yeah. And we're going to start to come back up and come into child's pose. So sitting back onto your heels. Allow the hands to come out in front. And from child's pose, making our way into our first down the dog of the class. So, elevating the hips up towards the sky, feet about hip width apart, fingertips, or index finger or middle finger pointing forwards, looking down between your knees, and then elevating the tailbone up towards the sky. Inhale the right leg up towards the sky, and then set the right foot outside of the right hand and then lower the back knee towards the ground. Okay, rocking forwards a few times. You can of course do this off your knee if you prefer. That's fine as well, it doesn't really matter. We want to, when we lower the knee, find a nice big stretch. Right foot is parallel to the edge of the mat and the forearm and the shin are lined up and knees over the ankle here. So this might be enough of a stretch, you might want to just hold this for the uh, two minutes or so that we're going to do. Or you can start to lower to the forearms. If you can't quite reach, maybe you want to bring like a, a block or a brick or a um, probably more like a book if you're doing this at home underneath there. And that can be a good option as well. And we just hold this pose, breathing in, breathing out. In through the nose, out through the nose, into the belly, out of the belly. I like to say the word release in my head as I breathe in, re, as I breathe out, lease, or relax, or let go, something like that, just to direct the body to release and relax. Allowing gravity to do the work, allowing time to do the work, allowing the inner body to do the work. Again, if you're counting your breaths, you're probably doing about five to seven breaths a minute. So you want about 10 to 
14 breaths will be about two minutes. Come back up onto the hands. And then tucking the back toes and then rocking forwards and backwards to get a bit of blood flow going on before stepping back into downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg, up, uh, left leg up towards the sky, and then step that one outside of the left hand. Again, setting up here, shin and uh, forearm in line, lowering the back knee, maybe rocking forwards and backwards a couple of times, or doing it on your toes instead. Again, stay here if you wish. Otherwise, start to lower down onto your forearms. Again, recognizing the fact that each side will be slightly different. Adjust as you need, maybe the foot or the knee, and then just start to settle down as best you can. You know, this is pose here. As thoughts come in and out of your mind, as they will do, this is tough practice yin because here you can't distract yourself with the movement of the body. So the movement of the mind tends to dominate. And so what we want to do is we want to bring it to a focal point, usually the breath, to recognize that it's not bad or wrong to have thoughts coming in and out of our head, but we are not our thoughts. They are transient things, a bit like clouds in the sky that come in and out of view of your window. But we want to train ourselves to bring our attention back to the breath. Okay, so we're not trying to follow the thoughts across the sky, we bring ourselves back to the, the window frame as it were, and the bit of blue sky in between the clouds. Of course, if you're in London today, as I am, it's very grey, it's about as grey as my mat and my clothing is today, and um, I don't think there's any blue sky going on today. And popping back up onto your hands, Taking a moment here, tucking the back toe, and then stepping back into downward facing dog. Having a little pedal through the feet, holding your downward dog here. Breathing in, and breathing out. And from downward dog, let's just bring our hands towards our feet, coming into ragdoll position, bending the knees, Keeping a nice softness in the back of the knees. Coming into ragdoll for just a, a moment here as we swing the arms, pendulum, by bringing the hands onto the opposite elbow and bending into one leg and the other before we start to make our way down to the ground. From here, coming on to your bottom, and we're going to cross the right ankle over the left. Knee, making a figure four with the legs here, flexing the right foot, and we're going to be trying to keep that knee, the right knee, away from us. So we're going to thread the needle, bring the hands to the left thigh, bring the right elbow onto the thigh, flex that right foot, allow the left foot to come down towards the thigh, and then bringing the ankle towards the chest. And then we hold here. Breathing in, breathing out, inhale, re, exhale, release. Every time you breathe in and out and you do your release or you relax or let go breath, you want to see if it can be translated into a little bit of a deepening of the stretch. Okay, be mindful of your knees in this position, back out if it's too strong. And 
from there, lowering the left foot. Continue to cross the right ankle, or the right knee over the left knee, so crossing your legs. And then we just take a, a, a slight twist here, we bring the knees towards the left, resting the right left hand on the thighs, right hand away, just taking a twist. We're gonna hold this for two minutes, but twist into the hips slightly, feel a stretch maybe along the outer right hip, so similar to what we were just doing, really same sort of area. And then coming up onto your back, taking the left ankle over the right knee, opening up, flexing the foot, threading the needle, pulling towards you, pressing with the right, sorry, with the left elbow away onto the left thigh. As you start to pull, Again, release, relax, let go. Thoughts coming in and out of your mind. Recognize you're not your thoughts. It's just like clouds passing in the sky, and you looking at them from your window. Let's focus back on the breath. Mm, releasing the right foot down, crossing the left knee over the right thigh, taking the knees over to the right hand side, extend the left arm away, right hand onto the thigh, into the left knee, and again taking a, a twist here. And then coming back onto your back, and then hugging yourself tightly, and squeezing the knees in towards the armpits, grabbing hold behind the thighs, and holding here. forwards and backwards and coming up to seating. Now if you have a strap or a belt or a towel um, it would be a good opportunity possibly to use it. I have one cunningly hidden behind here. Um, so if you've got something great, if not you can hold on to the back of your thigh on this one and then the foot on the next exercise. But if you've got a strap Placing it on the ball of your foot, extend the left leg away, right leg comes up towards the ceiling. Here you're going to bend the knee, so if you're holding on to the thigh, you hold on to the thigh and then you do this. Uh, otherwise you hold on to the strap, you bend the knee towards your chest and then you start to straighten the leg, pushing the heel up towards the ceiling. Try and re relax the shoulders so you're not tensed up in, in the neck. Uh, you can hold as far down the, the strap as you want or high up. So bend the knee, bring the thigh towards the chest, then extend the heel away from you and you try and open up here. Okay, we're not staying here for two minutes, we're just warming up and bringing the knee in and opening. But what we are going to do is we're going to take the strap in our left hand, we're going to extend an ankle with the right hand away from us and we're going to draw the right foot over to the left side Trying to keep both shoulders on the ground. Again, here you can do this with uh, holding onto the foot 
or if it's not accessible to you to keep a straight leg, you can bend the leg, or you can have this as a um, as more of a spinal twist and have the knee bent if you don't have a strap and you can't get anywhere close to your uh, your foot. Okay, but here we want to push the ankle away or the heel away from us. And imagine someone is pulling the right thigh back down to the ground, right hip back down to the ground. So it's like a tug of war going on between your hip and your heel. Okay, hip to heel, tug of war, and you feel maybe something along the glutes, along the IT band, maybe even in the lower back. Again, never pain, always back away from pain, but definitely a stretch, a challenge, a positive sensation, even though it may not be feeling so positive in the moment. Remembering to focus on your breath, releasing and relaxing. back into the centre, keep a strap on the leg but grab hold of the strap with the right hand, just take a little bit of a counter pose as we open up towards the right, and I'm going to stay here for two minutes but we're just going to open up slightly, start pulling the foot towards the head if you can, keeping the leg straight, again if you haven't got a strap you can do this with a bent leg, that's perfectly fine, you're still opening up in the same place, all good. And then bending the knee, coming back into the center. And we're gonna swap over, bringing the strap underneath the ball of the left foot, extend the right leg away from us. Bend the knee, bring the chest and the thigh closer together, and then extend the heel away, okay? So we bend the knee, and then we extend away, okay? Again, holding on behind your thigh if you don't have a strap, okay? Bend and straighten, bend and straighten, okay? The idea is you're trying to get your shin to your chin. Not really gonna happen for me anytime soon, but that's the intention of the movement. Then you grab hold of the strap with the right hand, left hand anchors, start to draw the foot towards the right hand side. Again, that tug of war happening between the hip and the heel as you anchor the shoulders to the ground, maybe looking towards the left hand. Maybe you're just having a bent leg, maybe you've got your hand on your foot. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what it looks like, it just matters what it feels like. That's all good. And then bring your attention back to your breath. And then coming back into the center, taking the strap in your left hand, extending the leg over to the left side, opening up here for a moment or two. Again, pulling the foot towards the head, if you can. And coming back into the center, 
And let's move the strap away. Oh, well, actually, we can keep the strap wherever you want. We're going to need that in a second. Bringing the knees in towards the chest, hugging yourself there. Rotating through the ankles one way than the other. And then coming, rocking forwards and backwards a few times. And then just coming into child's pose one more time, maybe. This time, knees wide. And then sinking back, finding your breath. Pulling your child's pose. We come back up to sitting on your bottom and bringing the soles of the feet together, the knees coming apart. Okay, so we've got customer here. You can do this without the strap if you wish, but I'm going to use the strap. I'm going to wrap it around the feet here, hold it in each hand. I'm going to allow gravity to do the work to pull the knees down towards the ground. And we're going to make sure that we're not having to overly think about bringing our heels in because we're going to be holding on with the strap. From here, we're going to slowly come down onto our backs. Okay, so once we've got a bit of a comfortable position, we can start bringing the feet closer and closer. Now that might make the knees rise, it might not, but the idea is we, we've got the feet secure here with the strap so we can relax as much as possible, okay? So we can just relax the hips, relax the knees down, and we allow gravity to do the work. It's gonna be our final pose before our Shavasana, or you can stay in this pose during the Shavasana piece, if you wish, if you find it more pleasant. Um, this can be a nice one to take a modified Shavasana in. So either way, just focus on the breath. Any tight spots that you feel, just imagine you're breathing into them. And out of them. And each time releasing, relaxing, letting go. You wish stay here, otherwise we're going to slowly come into our final resting pose, Shavasana. So you can remove the strap, extend the legs away nice and slowly to the corners of the mat. Getting comfortable here, maybe if you need a blanket or anything, you've got one close by, putting that on. Toes flop open, palms face the sky about six inches away from your hips, neck nice and long, breath nice and soft. As thoughts come in and out of your mind, just observe them, don't get attached to them. It's like trying to hold onto a cloud, it's very difficult to do.
the wiggle of the fingers and the toes. Rotating through the wrists and the ankles, one way and the other way. Taking a full body stretch, you take your hands over your head to the floor behind you. And with a bit of a yawn, oh, and a sigh. Mm, bring the knees in towards your chest. Hugging yourself tightly. Telling yourself something nice about yourself. Even if it's like the fifth time you've had to film this as it's had so many technical issues. <laughs> but we've got it done. And then keeping your attention inwards and focus towards your forehead, your third eye. Rolling either to your left or your right in the fetal position. Maybe making a pillow with the hands before slowly pushing yourself up to sitting on your mat in a comfortable seated position. Keeping your eyes closed, your attention inwards as you bring your hands into prayer position in front of the heart centre. Just checking in with your body right now, seeing where you're at. Then as you raise your prayer towards your third eye, your forehead, may we always seek the truth. Lowering our prayer towards our mouth or our throat chakra, may we always speak the truth. And finally, lowering our hands towards our heart centre, may we always be in truth. Namaste. Thank you so much for uh, practicing along with me today. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Um, it was, I think, the fifth attempt that I've had. Um, it was the third at the beginning, but then it kept um, technical issues halfway through. So hopefully it is a seamless practice for you. Uh, please do follow along with me on social media. The Thought Gym, uh, as in thinking, is where you will find me. So The Thought Gym and also thethoughtgym.com. You'll find lots of great resources there. So head to thethoughtgym.com and all the social media channels, um, especially YouTube, there's lots of information there. Until next time, have a fantastic week, month, year and life. Until I see you again on the mat. Namaste.